Hi everyone, Nick here, welcome back. Many investors have been wondering, does it make sense to add non-US stocks to my portfolio? Despite 100 years of US stock outperformance, many experienced investors disagree on the benefits of international diversification. In this video, I'm going to explain the most compelling reasons to only invest in US stocks. After that, I'll share why I still think it's a huge mistake. The primary argument for investing only in US stocks is performance. People want more money. So let's take a quick look at Portfolio Visualizer to see a couple performance scenarios. We'll use the backtest portfolio asset allocation starting in year 2010 with $10,000. We'll contribute $500 per month, adjusted for inflation and rebalancing annually. The first portfolio is going to have 100% in the U.S. stock market, and the second portfolio 60% U.S., 40% XUS. So let's just take a quick look at these returns. So we can see that there is almost a $50,000 outperformance of the U.S. only portfolio, and this was almost 3% extra return. It had better volatility measures, a better Sharp ratio and Sortino ratio, suggesting that it had a better risk adjusted return. Now let's take a look if we move this back. You know, the US obviously did better in the past decade, but international did better from 2000 to 2010. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at the same scenario. The US still greatly outperformed international about $135,000 extra return, and comparable metrics on the risk-adjusted returns. Now let's just take this back as far as it goes. That's 1986. Just take a quick look at that one. So in this scenario, investing in only U.S. stocks returned over $1 million in an extra return. If you started investing in 1986, and we're just getting ready to retire now, this would make a massive difference in the quality of your life, being able to spend an extra million dollars. And that million dollars might actually earn a $40,000, $50,000 extra annual return. That is phenomenal. And people who invested in only US are in a much better position now. So that's one of the main reasons why people advocate for investing in US stocks only. So the next reason is U.S. companies have all you need. So if we look at the top 20 overall companies in the world, 15 of them are based in the U.S. You can see this here, the country over here on the right. Almost all of them. You have Apple, Microsoft, Berkshire, Hathaway, Tesla, so on. There's just a handful that are outside the U.S. So that's another pretty good reason. And then you have sector diversification. Of all those companies we just saw in the top 20, they're pretty well diversified. The U.S. is a pretty strong economy. So next is the S&P 500 actually has a lot of international exposure, with 40% of its revenues coming from outside the U.S. So just by investing in U.S. companies, you can actually get a lot of international exposure. So another reason many people use is famous investors have suggested that it's fine to just invest in the U.S. Jack Bogle, founder of Vanguard, was one of them. And so is Warren Buffett, who said his wife's portfolio after he passes will be 90% S&P 500 and 10% Treasuries. The next reason is exceptionalism. Many people believe that the U.S. is an exceptional place to invest. It's more friendly to companies and conducting business. Now, they believe that there's better taxes, a better legal system, it's less corrupt, has the global reserve currency, and there's lower fees for investing in general. Across the board, they believe that it's just better for businesses. And that's why another reason why they invest in U.S. only. Now let's look at the arguments for global investing. The first is diversification. Most people would not suggest that you invest in just one company or one sector. And the same reason we like to use index funds and let the market price our risks and prospective returns for us. Why not do this with global investing? We can diversify across currencies, political exposure, economic, and all sorts of other risks. The next reason is modern portfolio theory. 
This is Nobel Prize winning research from Markowitz that showed that by diversifying across different asset classes that have lower correlations, you can actually increase returns with less risk. Now this is pretty foundational research. I have another video entirely on this topic that goes into a lot of details on why this is the case. And that's on asset allocation. I'll link it up here and below. So one of the next reasons is cyclicality. XUS has and can outperform for decades. Now let's take a look at some of these charts showing this performance. So the first is US versus international stocks. So you can see when it's below 0%, that means international outperformed. When it's above, that means US is outperformed. Now you don't have a 100 year investing timeline to capture that 2% extra return the US has delivered in the past 100 years. If that were to continue, you only have a maybe a 50 to 70 year timeline if you're young and you happen to live a long time. Now, while you're saving for retirement is probably the most impactful, and that's usually going to be only 30 to 40 years. Now, if you invested in only US stocks and got unlucky and did it in one of the time periods where international or ex-US outperformed, you could have had the inverse of what we saw in the portfolio visualizer earlier. Let's just look at a couple other charts. This is a global uh, equity market distribution, global market cap. You can see over here that the US is actually 65% of the global market went down to 30% and has trended back up towards 60 recently. And then if we look at the share of global GDP over history, in the first thousand years, uh, from year one, one to say even into the 1700s, uh, Eastern economies dominated, China, India, and other economies. And it wasn't until around the 1800s that the West started to have more influence on the global economy. We're seeing that trend is actually also reversing. The US is currently only 15% of global GDP, but somehow represents 60% of the global market cap. And then the next one is the global reserve currencies over time. In the past you know, six, 700 years, we've seen six different global reserve currencies, Portugal, Spain, Netherlands, France, Britain, and the US. These don't last forever. These trends are highly cyclical. They don't last forever and they change frequently. And you have to make the best decision you can to hedge against these different risks of these trends changing, empires rising and falling, political systems, wars, and so on. And I think this is an asymmetric risk. If you happen to get lucky and choose the right one, you could get a bit of outperformance, like 2% for the US over the past 100 years. However, if you're unlucky and you have an asymmetric risk occur, like a world war, a political upheaval, or something like what happened in the 80s in Japan, that could be devastating for your portfolio and you could not have enough money to survive in your retirement. Let's take a look at what happened in Japan in the 80s. In the 80s, Japan's stock market was crushing it, completely beating every other global economy. And investors in Japan probably saw very good returns. However, if they retired around the 1990s and were only invested in the Japanese equity market, that would have had a very negative impact on their retirement. So to recap, I think it is an asymmetric risk. You have a bit of upside, but a lot of potential downside and risks that can materialize. Another reason for global diversification is exceptionalism is already priced in. Now, some people argue that US outperformance might have been due to luck, not having had as much impact from world wars or other political upheavals and so on that may have occurred in Europe. But if we look at the price to earnings ratio and the price to book ratios for the US, VTI is the US total stock market ETF from Vanguard. The price to earnings, this is how much you're paying for the company's stock price for every $1 of earnings they deliver. You're paying 19.1 times on average. And the price to book, which is the price of the company versus their net worth or book value, if it were to be liquidated, is 3.4x. 
If you look at VXUS, the Vanguard ETF for the total international stock market, the price earnings ratio is significantly lower at 12.2x and the price to book is significantly lower at 1.6x. So for every dollar you're investing internationally, right now you're getting more earnings and more book value. So people, why is this? People believe that the US companies will probably grow more and have more favorable results than XUS. Whether that will be true or not is yet to be known, but you are definitely paying a premium based on this pricing. So this is my question to you. Is this a risk worth taking? Will US outperformance last forever? How confident are you that the US companies will or will not continue to deliver higher returns to investors? Are you willing to bet your financial future on it? And why take the risk? I'll be humble enough to admit, I don't know the answer to these questions. I'm fairly certain US companies will not deliver higher returns forever, but I have no idea if it'll be this year, this decade, or this century. It's possible the US continues to go on and outperform global economies, but I simply don't know. And I don't think the risk is worth taking. There's a lot of research that backs up diversification, modern portfolio theory, and so on. And I'm a lot more comfortable investing in that globally diversified portfolio. So let's say you've decided you wanna diversify internationally. The next question is how much in XUS? I think this should depend on your level of conviction in global diversification. For people who have a very, very strong conviction that the US is an exceptional place to invest, Maybe they should have 100% in the US because that's what they can buy and hold for the long time, for the long term. Our investing life cycle is 40, 70, maybe even more years if you're really young. You need to be able to stick with your investing decision. I think that's one of the most important things of being a successful investor is picking a strategy that you have a strong conviction in and can stick with over the long term even if it turns out that it underperforms for 10, 20, 30 years. So that, I think that should drive how much you invest in XUS. My opinion, which is an investing advice, is that you should have at least 20% in international stocks or XUS stocks. However, I prefer the global market capitalization. For the same reason, I use the total stock market index, letting the market price the risks and the prospective returns of different companies. I prefer to let the market decide this for different countries. And this, there's a fund from Vanguard called the Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index, ticker VT for the ETF or VTWAX for the mutual fund. I made another video on this fund specifically. It's a great fund and could be your single fund for global equity exposure. This tracks the FTSE All World Index or All Cap Index. It's a very well diversified portfolio. You can find uh, statistics from the FTSE website. Uh, you can currently see the global breakdown here where the US is actually at, let's see, 59% uh, right now. So that XUS is 41%. Uh, so these are all the different economies it tracks and there's a bunch of different statistics here. I'll put a link to this below. Uh, so yeah, make sure you check out my videos on VT and also on the best international stock funds. Some people don't wanna use an all-in-one fund like VT, even though it's much simpler, much easier to do. There can be some minor optimizations for taxes and other reasons using separate international and US funds. Or even for the international exposure, possibly with different developed and emerging market funds. My video covers all these options and different fund providers in more detail. I hope you found this video useful and it helps you decide if you invest in XUS and if so, how much you invest in XUS. This is a hotly debated subject in the finance space. I really enjoy talking about it. I do have a strong opinion that people should invest globally, but I hope that this information helps you. Make sure to comment below and let us know if you think it's a good idea to diversify globally, and if so, what percentage do you invest outside the US? 
Also, if you want to support free financial education, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm sure you notice I tried a different video format in this video, much different than my old ones. I'd appreciate it if you provide some feedback on whether you like this versus the old format. I think this format will allow me to create content faster, getting back to weekly uploads, to do live streams and different types of content where I'm doing screen sharing. I'd really appreciate your feedback. Thanks for watching everyone. Later.